Okay, so uh, good evening, uh, mga kapatid. So uh, for uh, tonight, we're going to discuss okay, the uh, foreign currency transaction, okay, part one of our uh, lecture series on Forex. Okay. So admit lang natin muna yung mga papasok pa. Okay. So our uh, lecture on uh, forex transaction, okay? Ano yan? Tatlong topics ito, tatlong uh, series, no? Kumbaga ito yung first part, we have the uh, forex transaction without hedging, okay? The importing transaction, exporting transaction, we have uh, speculation to buy and speculation to sell, a foreign currency. Yung second part, we have the so-called uh, uh, forex transaction with hedging, okay? Applying the uh, forward uh, contract, okay? And also the option contract. And yung pangatlo, mga kapatid, ay ang tinatawag nating uh, forex translation, okay? So for uh, tonight, we're going to focus uh, on uh, forex transaction part one, okay? Without hedging, okay? So let me now at this point uh, share my screen okay, to uh, uh, start our uh, lecture okay, for tonight. And I hope kita ninyo. Yan. Okay. So foreign currency transaction, this is uh, based no, on uh, a far quick notes. 2023 edition, okay, authored by uh, yours truly, okay. Uh, by the way, I would like to introduce first myself. I'm attorney Ivan Yanik Sarol Bagayao, okay. I am a uh, certified public accountant and uh, a uh, reviewer, okay, of AFAR and RFBT, uh, okay. At uh, I started teaching class in 2011. Okay, admit muna natin. Ayan. 2011 sa University of Santo Tomas, my uh, alma mater. Okay? And uh, ang first subject na itinuro ko class ay AFAR. Ayan. So favorite subject natin ito. So let us now start. How to determine foreign currency transaction? So syempre class, kailangan mo munang alamin kung i-apply mo ba ang... Uh, ang uh, forex okay, na concept doon sa transaction. So first, uh, you have to take note of uh, the parties involved in the said uh, transaction. Is it uh, domestic corporation? Okay? Domestic corp and a domestic corporation. Okay? DC stands for domestic. Number two, domestic corp and foreign corp ba yung nagtransact? Number three, domestic corp and foreign corp. However, the uh, settlement is in foreign currency unit. No? Yung isa, domestic currency unit. Say, for example, domestic corporation natin is uh, Jollibee Food Corporation. Okay? Publicly listed siya sa Pilipinas. Okay? Philippine Stock Exchange at ang domestic currency ay Philippine Peso. Okay? What if nakipag-transact siya at bumili ang Jollibee Food Corporation sa uh, foreign corp no? at uh, sa ibang bansa po galing yung uh, goods na ibibenta ni Jollibee naman? So yung foreign corp na yan, nag-supply. So importing transaction on the part of Jollibee Food Corporation. And if it is settled in uh, domestic currency, okay, ang uh, uh, consideration natin class, okay, I, with regard to Jollibee Food Corp, okay, the domestic corporation, since it is settled using the Philippine peso, hindi po siya considered as foreign currency transaction on the part of Jollibee. But on the part of the supplier, yung foreign corporation, since uh, ang settlement okay, at ang currency na gagamitin ay peso, then sa kanya, sa foreign corp, yan po ay forex transaction. 
and vice versa. Kung ang pagbabayad uh, uh, ng uh, uh, binili ni Jollibee is uh, using, uh, say for example, US dollar, no? sa US po galing yung uh, goods, then on the part of the domestic corp, in this case, Jollibee Food Corporation, okay, foreign currency transaction po ay present. Kasi ang currency po na ibabayad ni Jollibee, which is a domestic corp, ay US dollar. But on the part of the supplier, yung foreign corporation, since ang tatanggapin na niya ay US dollar at yan ang local currency niya as foreign corporation, no, hindi po siya forex transaction on the part ng may foreign corporation. Okay? So kapag ka domestic and domestic, yan, and it is settled in domestic currency or local currency units. Say, for example, bumili po ng, uh, uh, say, for example lang, no, yung uh, uh, DMCI. Okay? So that is uh, one of the uh, construction companies na uh, listed sa Philippine Stock Exchange ang kanyang uh, stocks. Okay? Uh, bumili siya, say, for example, ng materiales for the construction project sa domestic corp din. Okay? At uh, ang uh, settlement ng pagbayad nung binili niya ay in Philippine Peso. So, there is no forex transaction. Yan. Kapag foreign corp at saka foreign corp using foreign currency, say for example, okay, uh, US, then wala din pong forex transaction. So, nagkakaroon lang ng uh, forex transaction kung ang parties involved ay domestic and foreign corporation. Okay, so we have here uh, Docker stands for domestic uh, currency, and you have here uh, foreign currency naman, example natin a US dollar for Philippines, kapag domestic naman, peso for Philippines. Okay, now aside from determining class, kung meron bang forex transaction, okay, you have to determine also the important dates. Okay, kasi as we all know, Nagbabago class yung uh, tinatawag nating exchange rate every day. So volatile, no? nagbabago yan. So ngayon, hindi mo kailangang i-account yung forex gain or loss every day. Diba? So you have to take note na may tatlong important dates. First, the transaction date. Okay? Second, the balance sheet date. Third, the settlement date. Okay. So, yung transaction date, it is the date when the purchase or sale of service or goods okay, uh, takes place. No? At ito po ay uh, gagamitan natin ng important rate on the said transaction date. We have the spot rate. Okay. Now, pagdating ng presentation, okay, yung pag-prepare mo na ng FS, no? the balance sheet date, cut-off date. Yan po ay uh, important date and uh, dyan mo i-compute ang forex gain or loss. So any change in rate, nag-increase man yung rate or nag-decrease yung exchange rate, then you have to consider the forex gain or loss. Later, i-discuss natin kung paano i-compute yung forex gain or loss. So the balance sheet date is the date when closing rate will be applied. And the closing rate again class is the spot rate on the said balance sheet date. Okay? Ngayon. Bumili ka si, for example, nung September 2021, okay? And then uh, you have uh, balance sheet date, December 31, 2021. And your settlement date is March 31, 2022. Okay? So, yung settlement date naman, it is the date when the payment or receipt shall be made. Diyan na yung uh, uh, magbabayad ka na, or ikaw naman, since ikaw nagbenta, ikaw naman yung tatanggap ng payment, okay? And the forex gain or loss should be computed. Again, using spot or the actual rate. Okay? So, ito class yung mga important dates. Kapag merong commitment date sa problem, okay, you have to determine kung yung commitment na yan ay uh, firm okay, or non-cancellable. Kasi kung yan po ay hindi po firm commitment or non-cancellable, hindi importante yung date na yan it will not be considered as the transaction date. Okay. So, let us now focus class dun sa uh, four uh, transactions dun sa part one ng Forex natin without hedging. Okay. We have here purchase or sale of goods or service. So, you have GS. 
Okay? Kapag ikaw ay bumibili ng uh, goods okay? or service from a foreign corporation or supplier galing sa ibang bansa, you are technically importing. Okay? Kaya ang tawag dyan ay importing transaction. Okay? Kung ikaw naman ang magbebenta papunta sa foreign corporation sa ibang bansa, ikaw naman yung supplier, selling of goods or service, you are exporting. Okay, the said goods. Okay? Now, uh, paano yung accounting natin dito? Okay? If you are importing, this is also known as ELP or the exposed liability position. Why? Okay? Dahil kapag ikaw ay nag-import, okay, ang entry mo ay debit purchases. Okay, later, balikan din natin to, no, doon sa ating uh, problem solving. And credit accounts payable. So, ibig sabihin, itong accounts payable na ito, which is a monetary item, nagbabago yan. No? As the exchange rate uh, increases or decreases, gumagalaw din itong accounts payable mo. So, naka-expose siya. Okay? Kaya exposed liability position. And the effect class, kapag nag increase ang rate, and uh, itong rate na ito class, ha, naka-direct quotation tayo. Okay? Direct quote. And later, ipakita natin yung direct quote. Pag nag increase yung rate, okay? say for example, yung exchange rate ng transaction date is $45, rather 45 peso is to $1. Ngayon, 50 pesos na is to 1 dollar. Okay? So, nag-increase yung rate. So, it follows, mag increase yung liability. So, the effect will be forex loss. And, kasi sino ba naman ang may gusto na tumataas ang kanyang accounts payable? Okay? On the other hand, kapag ka ikaw naman ang nagbenta, selling of goods or service, so this is an exposed asset position. Okay? So, kung exposed asset position class, ang entry mo ay debit, okay, receivable, and, and credit ka ng sales. Okay? So, ngayon, since ang uh, exposed, okay, doon sa change in exchange rate or forex rate ay yung accounts receivable, Siyempre, gusto mo kapag tumataas ang uh, uh, exchange rate, tumataas din yung value ng receivable mo. Okay? Kaya, the effect class is forex gain. Okay? Forex gain. Ayan. Pag nag increase yung rate. Okay? Ngayon, anong rate po ba ang pinag-uusapan natin kapag importing transaction or exporting transaction? Spot rate po ang importanteng rate na dapat nating i-effect. Rate on the transaction date, spot rate on the balance sheet date, and spot rate on the settlement date. Okay? At bakit exposed asset position ang tawag sa kanya? Because your receivable is exposed to the change in the exchange rate. Okay? Yung pang uh, tatlo na transaction, so this is number one, number two, number three, no? and number four. Yung pangatlo ay speculation to buy. Pag sinabi natin speculation to buy, ikaw ay uh, bibili ng foreign currency. So, hindi po goods ang bibili mo or service. But, okay, foreign currency. For what purpose? Ine-expect mo kasi na tataas yung value ng currency na yan. Kasi for example, dollars, yen, okay, or other uh, currency. Kaya bumili ka na ngayon. Okay? So, if that is uh, for mere speculation, Okay. You have to use not the spot rate on the transaction or balance sheet date, but the forward rate. Okay, forward rate. This is the rate indicated today okay, to be forwarded or to be applied in the future. Kaya ang tawag din po dyan ay future rate. Okay, but on the settlement date, gagamitin mo na yung spot rate. So take note of that. Ha? So speculation Transaction, balance sheet, forward rate ang gagamitin. Pag settlement, date, the spot rate. Okay? Now, what is the effect kapag ka nag increase yung rate? Class, the effect if uh, nag-increase po yung rate, okay, 
ay forex game. Bakit po ganon? Kasi ikaw ay bibili ng foreign currency. So, ang entry mo ay debit foreign currency receivable credit peso payable. Later, ipakita rin natin by solving problem. So, inote muna natin dito, quick note natin, kapag speculation to buy at nag-increase ang forward rate, meron kang forex gain. Kapag ka naman speculation to sell, ikaw ang merong foreign currency at gusto mong ibenta in the future, pero nakipag-agree ka na ngayon na ibebenta mo siya ngayon at specified price to be applied in the future. Kaya, on the transaction date, forward rate ang gagamitin. And on the settlement date, spot rate ang gagamitin mo naman na rate. And what will be the effect kapag nag-increase ang forward rate or spot rate on the settlement date? Dito po, ang effect po niya ay forex loss. So it shows class na hindi lahat ng buying pag nag increase forex loss. Kasi pag ito po ay buying of currency, nagkakaroon ka ng forex gain. Now to illustrate further the concepts, no? dito sa ating uh, uh, notes, dito sa purchase or sale of goods or service or currency, kailangan po nating ipakita doon sa uh, problem solving. But before that, let us discuss yung concept muna ng direct quotation. Okay? So, uh, mag-ingat ka sa problem, baka kasi ang ipakita po doon sa problem ay naka-indirect quote. Okay? Ganito po ang simpleng concept ng direct quotation. Pag direct quotation, yung local currency or domestic currency nasa numerator at yung foreign currency nasa denominator. Okay, say for example, ang palitan na ng peso sa dollar, say for example lang, ay 55 pesos is to 1 dollar. Okay? O kaya naman 50 pesos is to 1 dollar. 45 pesos is to 1 dollar. So sa perspective ng domestic corp, okay, which is yung Philippine corporations, 50 peso is to 1 ay naka-direct quote po yan. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, since ang denominator ay yung foreign currency, direct quote po kay domestic corp yan. Pero pag binaliktad natin, okay, 1 peso divided by, rather 1 dollar divided by 50 pesos, so that is 0.02, okay, dollars is to 1 peso, binaliktad mo na, no? Yung peso ang nasa denominator, okay? And that is now the indirect quote. So, dito sa problem letter A, if 50 peso can be exchanged for 1 US dollar, what is the direct quotation expressed in Philippine peso? Ang sagot po natin, okay? Letter A. 50 is to 1. Okay? So, yan po yung direct quote. Kasi, ang local currency natin ay nasa numerator, Yung $1, yan naman yung foreign currency unit. Yan po yung direct quote. Okay? Express in Philippine peso. But if direct quote naman class, direct pa rin ha, hindi po indirect yung ginamit kong word. Okay? Express in US dollar. So sa perspective naman ng foreign corporation, okay? Yan na foreign corp naman to class, no? Okay? Example, US firm. Ang kanyang... Uh, Direct quotation will be 0 0.02 US dollar is to 1 peso. Okay, kasi perspective na ni foreign corp yan. Ito naman perspective ni domestic corp. And, okay, so ito po yan. So direct quotation is when the foreign currency unit is the base amount or denominator. Indirect quotation is when the local currency unit is the base amount or denominator. So, Ibig sabihin, kung mag indirect quote po tayo dito, etong 0 0.02 is to 1 peso, indirect quote po sa perspective ni Philippine Corporation or Domestic Corp. Ito naman pong 50 peso is to 1 dollar, yan naman yung indirect quote in the perspective of okay, foreign corporation. Ganyan po ha, okay? Para hindi po tayo malito, ang direct quotation ay LCU over FCU, foreign currency. So, ayan po, 50 is to 1. That is the direct quote for Philippine or domestic corp. And 0 0.02 is to 1, direct quote po yan ni 
foreign corp. Indirect quote naman yan ni domestic corporation. So what is the effect, sir, kapag ka ganito? Okay? Sa concept class, kapag tumataas ang uh, value okay, or exchange rate na nakadirect quotation from 50 pesos is to 1 dollar, naging 55, humihina po, nagde-depreciate yung value ng peso. ba? Pero kapag naka-indirect quote, baliktad, nag appreciate naman po kapag ka tumataas yung indirect quote ng Philippine peso is to dollar. Okay, so ngayon, class, uh, mag-ingat lang. Kasi baka sa problem, instead na naka-direct quote, indirect quote muna yung pinakita. Okay, so may advice, quick note natin, i-convert mo muna yung indirect quote to direct quotation. So LCU muna over FCU bago ka mag-compute ng forex gain or loss. Okay? So that's for direct and indirect. So suggested answer natin, again, letter A and letter D. Yan. So let's proceed to importing transactions. Ito po yung entry na pinakita natin kanina, also known as exposed liability position. So on the transaction date, again, your entry is debit purchases, credit accounts payable. Okay? At historical rate or spot rate. Okay? Sa balance sheet date class, if the spot rate increases, nag-increase po yung uh, uh, exchange rate, ang nagbabago po ay yung accounts payable. Siya po yung uh, nag adjust So, pag nag-increase, tataas din yung liability. Gusto mo ba na tumaas ang liability mo? Hindi. Kaya ang result class ay forex loss. Entry, credit accounts, payable. But if the spot rate decreases, bumagsak, Okay? I-debit mo naman yung accounts payable kasi siya nag adjust At since nabawasan yung liability, mag-recognize ka ng forex gain. So, ganyan po ang entry natin sa balance sheet date. But on the settlement date class, okay? so you don't need to again no? recognize or record yung daily gain or loss mo sa forex. Important dates lang, transaction date, balance sheet, and settlement. Okay. So sa settlement date class, since babayaran mo na yung accounts payable, i-debit mo. Okay? So debit accounts payable at amount okay? stated at the balance sheet date. And then credit cash kung magkano po yung palitan doon sa settlement date. So pag nag-increase yung rate further, recognize loss. Yan po yung note natin kanina. Okay? Kapag nag-decrease naman yung rate, baliktad recognize ka naman ng gain. Ayan na, debit accounts payable pa rin kasi i-close mo nga po yung accounts payable and credit cash. Now, let us solve a okay, problem letter B. On September 1, 2021, JLN Company, a Philippine-based company ordered 1,000 units of inventory from US Corporation. So, ang kailangan mo lang class na consider ay yung Okay? FCU. Una. Ayan, FCU. Okay? So, the foreign currency unit. Then, okay, aside from the FCU, okay, you have to consider the important dates. Yung September 1, 2021 ay commitment date. So, hindi pa ito importante. Bakit po hindi importante? Kasi pwede po siyang mag-back out. Diba? Nag-order pa lang eh. Wala pa pong shipment. So, ang titignan nyo ay kailan na ship. Sabi sa problem, the inventory was shipped and invoiced to JLN firm on December 1, 2021. So, this is now your transaction date. Okay? And December 31 is your balance sheet date. Okay? And February 1, sabi po dito, to be paid on February 1, 2022. So, this is now your settlement date. Ang tanong, Anong rate ang gagamitin natin? Since ikaw ay umorder, okay, bumibili ka ng goods. Okay? So kung bumibili ka ng goods class, okay, ang rate na gagamitin mo ay hindi po buying spot rate. Okay? Selling spot rate ang gagamitin natin. Okay? But if you are the seller naman, buying spot rate ang gagamitin mo. 
Okay? Bakit po ganun? O, ganito yung concept, mga kapatid, ha? Pag ikaw ay pumunta sa bangko and the bank is considered as forex dealer, okay? At uh, bibili ka, no? Nang uh, dollars, di ba, sa bangko, hindi naman yung buying rate ang gagamitin na pamalit, no? Kung hindi yung selling rate. Bakit po ganun? Kasi si bank ang nagbebenta. Okay? Ikaw naman ang bumibili. Ayan. So, kung napansin nyo, pag pumasok kayo sa banko, meron doon selling spot rate, buying spot rate. If you are the buyer, ang rate na may apply pag bibili ka ng dollars ay yung selling rate ng bank. Ganun din po dito. Okay? So, ayan po. Ngayon, since na-consider mo na yung important dates, okay, i-disregard mo na yung commitment, yung 40.1. Okay? So, with regard to the uh, uh, exchange rate on the transaction date, 40.30, 40.85, and 40.65 ang gagamitin mo. So, to compute class the balances, the FCU, multiply this by the rate. Ito po yung dalawang importanting formula sa Forex. Okay? If you're going to compute for the balance, at kung ang tanong, magkano ang accounts payable balance on the balance sheet date, all you have to do is just multiply 25,000 na rate, rather FCU, I should say, by the exchange rate on the balance sheet date na 40.85. Kung ang tanong ay magkano ang accounts payable balance on the transaction date, just multiply the rate, 40.30, by the FCU. So ito po yung first formula that you have to consider. Yung second formula class, okay, ay FCU pa rin, okay, foreign currency unit pa rin, multiply this by the change, okay, change in rate. Okay, change in rate. So ngayon, yung change in rate na sinasabi natin, from 40.30 naging 40.85, nag-increase by 0.55. Okay? Tapos 40.85 to 40.65, nag-decrease by 20 or 0.20. So, kapag ka ganyan, dyan mo mako-compute class yung forex gain or loss. The change in rate, okay? Multiply this by the FCU. So, class, ang labanan po pag forex, okay, ay yung pag-determine ng tamang exchange rate. Kasi dalawang formula lang ang gagamitin natin dito, technically. Okay? Ito lang po. Number one, balance formula. Number two, forex gain or loss formula. Okay? Ganun lang po siya kasimple sa pag-compute. Ang mahirap po ay yung pag-determine ng tamang rate. Okay? Kasi maraming rate na ibibigay. Okay? So for question number three, how much is the forex gain or loss on December 31, 2022? So all you have to do is just to deduct 40.85 by 40.30, multiply this by 25,000. US dollar. Yung number four, outstanding balance na accounts payable, all you have to do is just to multiply 25,000 US dollar by 40.85. Kasi nga, balance na tinatanong. At ito po, okay, ang ating uh, suggested solution dyan. Okay? For number five, forex gain or loss on February 1. And number six, pag sinabi pong net forex gain or loss, Okay, i-add mo po or i-deduct mo yung na-compute mong gain or loss ng Forex sa balance sheet at sa settlement date para maneto. Okay? And this is our suggested answer okay, for this uh, item. So we have here, okay, on the transaction date, this is the formula that I have mentioned a while ago, the transaction date rate, which is the spot rate, multiply this by the FCU, is equivalent to the value of the item, okay, monetary or non-monetary. So say for example, we have here 40.30 pesos is to 1 US dollar. Multiply this by 25,000 US dollar. Cancel dollars. Cancel dollars. Ang natitira po ay Philippine peso na 1,007,500. Kaya ito yung entry mo. Debit purchases, 1,007,500 credit accounts payable. Now on the balance sheet date, change in spot rate multiply this by the FCU. Sir, anong spot rate ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan? Balance sheet date rate at transaction date rate. 
multiply this by the FCU. Sir, ano po yung balance sheet date rate natin? Ito po siya. Okay? 40.85 minus 40.30 per dollar. Okay? So, you have here point, uh, 55 Multiply this by 25,000 US dollar. Cancel dollars. Cancel dollars. Natitira po ay Philippine peso 13,750. Sir, nag-increase po yung rate. So, nag-increase yung rate. At ang note natin kanina, kapag importing transaction, nagkaka-forex loss kapag nag increase yung rate. At dito po natin pinakita na loss nga. Bakit po? Loss. Kasi ang nagbabago ay accounts payable. So, nung nag-increase yung rate from 40.30 naging 40.85, may 13,750 na uh, forex gain or loss. Diba? Para ma-determine mo kung gain man siya or loss, ano ba yung entry? Ang nagbabago ay accounts payable, nag-increase ang accounts payable, so recognize forex loss. Ayan po. Ayan. Kaya sinimulan na natin kanina na kapag nag increase ang rate, kapag importing transaction, okay, or yung exposed liability position, loss ang magiging result. So ang sagot natin class sa number 3 is letter B, number 4 letter C, number 5 letter B. Just take note dyan sa handout ninyo. And number 6, letter D. Okay? But uh, of course, yung entries class, ito po yung ating uh, suggested uh, solution. On the settlement date, uh, change in spot rate, multiply this by the FCU. Anong spot rate ang pinag-uusapan natin? Ito po yun. Okay? The spot rate on the settlement date minus balance sheet date spot rate, which is 40.65 minus 40.85. So nag-decrease, no? nag-decrease yung rate on the settlement date. So kung nag-decrease yung rate, mababawasan yung accounts payable mo. Kaya magde-debit ka ng accounts payable. Diba? Gusto mo bang nababawasan ang liability? Yes. So what will be the result? Forex gain. Ang tanong magkano? Apply the formula. Change in rate, multiply this by the FCU. So you have 40.65 minus 40.85. That's point. Okay? 20, multiply this by 25,000 US dollar, cancel dollars, cancel dollars, Philippine peso of 5,000. It does not mean, class, na pag nag-negative loss na siya. No. Huwag niyong i-memorize ng ganun, mga kapatid. Okay? Kapag positive or negative, huwag kang malilito. Okay? Ang gawin mo lang, class, isipin mo ano ba ang nagbabago kapag importing transaction. It is accounts payable. So, pag nag-increase, loss. Pag nag-decrease, okay, gain. Kaya ito po ang entry natin. Forex gain, 5,000. Okay? Loss, 13,750. Pag nineto natin yan, you have 8,750 loss. Okay? Now, with regard to the account payable balance, ito naman po ang kanyang balance. So, you have 1,007,500 plus 13,750 minus 5,000. Kaya ang... Uh, accounts payable balance ay 1,016,250 which can be simply computed by sim uh, by multiplying 40.65 na rate by 25,000 na FCU. Itry nyo mga kapatid, no? 40.65 times 25,000 US dollar, yan din po yung 1,016,250. And credit cash, 1,016,250. Again, our answer class ay uh, number 3, letter B, number 4, letter C, number 5, letter B, number 6, letter D. Ito po yun. Okay. Now, let's proceed to exporting transaction. Kabaliktaran naman po ng importing at ang tawag naman din natin dito ay exposed asset position. Bakit po exposed asset yung position? Because on the transaction date, ang naka-expose sa change in rate ay yung accounts receivable. So, ito yung initial entry natin. Debit AR, accounts receivable, credit sales. Okay? Pag nag increase yung rate, yan, nadadagdagan yung receivable. Okay? So, matutuwa tayo. May forex gain ka. Okay? Pag nag decrease yung rate sa exporting transaction, Ayaw mo yan. Nagkakalos ka dahil nababawasan yung receivable mo. Yan po, no? So again, the formula is change in rate 
multiply this by the FCU. And on the settlement date, okay, since receivable yan, debit ang normal balance, mag-collect ka na. Okay? So credit mo na yung AR, ito po yun, debit ka na ng cash kung magkano po yung value ng uh, foreign currency unit at kung meron pa pong uh, decrease in AR, nagkakalos ka pa. Yan po, decrease. Pero pag nag-increase ang ating rate, matutuwa ka kasi like, uh, accounts receivable ang pinag-uusapan. It's an asset. So debit ka ng cash, okay? credit ka ng AR kasi nga nag-collect ka na and recognize further the gain. Okay? So let us illustrate the exposed asset position without hedging sa problem letter C. Sa handout in your class, okay? Uh, nandyan naman po no yung uh, problem uh, letter uh, C, November 1, 2021, BMK Company, a Philippine-based company receive an order. So siya po ang nakatanggap ng order. Okay? So ibig sabihin siya nagbebenta. Okay? Nang 1,500 units of inventory from HK Company, a US-based company for $50,000. So this is now your FCU. Okay? So kung receivable balance ang tinatanong, all you have to do is just multiply this by the spot rate. Diba? This is now your balance. Ang tanong, okay? anong rate ang gagamitin natin? This time, you are the seller of goods. Okay? So kung ikaw ang seller, ang rate na gagamitin mo ay buying spot rate, hindi po selling spot rate. Bakit po ganun? Kasi kung ikaw ang seller, ang ibabayad sa iyo ay dollars. Okay? Or foreign currency. Aanhin mo naman yan sa Pilipinas, hindi yan legal tender. So ang gagawin mo, pag nakuha mo na yung pera na foreign currency, yung dollars, pupunta ka sa banko. Okay? Sabi mo kay bank, Oy bank, ipapalit ko nga, ibebenta ko nga sa iyo itong dollars na binayad sa akin. Ay ganun, o sige. Ang pamalit niyan, ito yung buying rate ko. Ibig sabihin, ang masusunod ay yung rate ng banko. Ano ang uh, kumbaga status ng bank sa transaction na yan? The bank in that particular transaction is the buyer. Kaya yung rate na i-apply is the buying rate. Hindi po siya yung seller. Okay? So, ganun din po sa exposed asset position, ang rate na kailangan natin is buying rate. Okay? And you also have to consider the important dates. Okay? Ano ba yung November 1? Nag Order pa lang. Okay? Wala pa pong dineliver. Kailan na ship yung uh, goods on December 1? Okay? So again, this is a commitment date which is not important unless, unless it is firm or it is considered as non-cancellable. So transaction, December 1. Balance sheet, December 31. Settlement, March 2, 2022. So, ito po ang mga importanteng rate. So, from 40.640, naging 40.60, nag-increase. Tapos, sa settlement, nag-decrease. Oh, ano ang note natin kanina? Since receivable ang magbabago, pag nag increase sa December 31, we have to expect a forex gain. Sa March 2, 2022, since nag-decrease, we have to expect a forex loss. Paano i-compute ang gain or loss? Change. In rate, multiply this by F, CU. Shortcut po natin yan. Quick notes natin yan. Change in rate also sa settlement date from 40.60 naging 40.40 times F, C, U. Okay? Question number 7. How much is the forex gain or loss on December 31? So 40 naging 40.6. So 0. 0.6 times 50,000, that is 30,000. Okay, that's 30,000 gain. So letter C dapat ang sagot natin dyan. For number 8, how much is the outstanding accounts receivable? Since balance ang pinag-uusapan, okay, AR balance, kailan po ba yan? December 31. So all you have to do is just to multiply 40.60 by 50,000. So 40.60 times 50,000, so that is equivalent to uh, roughly of uh, 2 million. Okay, 2 million uh, uh, 30,000. Diba? 2 million 30. So ito po, no? letter A ang isasagot natin dyan. Okay? For number 9, how much is the forex gain or loss on March 2, 2022? So from 40.60, naging 40.40, 40, 
So the change in rate ay decrease. Decrease by 0.2. Okay, 0.2. Then multiply this by FCU. And the FCU is 50,000. So 50,000 times 0.2 is equivalent to 10,000. Matutuwa ka ba na nag-decrease ang rate? Hindi po. Kasi receivable ang nagbabago. So, loss ang isasagot natin. Letter B ang sagot natin dyan. Pero kapag net forex gain or loss ang tinatanong, since may loss ka na 10 at may gain ka kanina na 30, letter C ang isasagot mo, 20,000 net forex gain. At ito po ang ating suggested solution and answer dito sa item number 7, 8, 9, and 10. Letter C, letter A, letter B, and letter C. Okay? So on the transaction date, we have TD rate times FCU. So ito po yun, no? 40 pesos is to 1 US dollar. Okay? Naka-direct quote po tayo. Okay? Direct quote kasi foreign currency unit po ang denominator. Multiply this by 50,000, so you have 2 million. Ito po ang balance ng AR, credit sales on the transaction date. Pagdating ng balance sheet date, change in spot rate times FCU. So ito po yun, no? Balance sheet date, rate, which is 40.60 minus transaction date, rate, which is 40. So you have 0. 0.6 times 50,000. Ito yung sagot natin kanina na 30,000 gain. Paano mo i-entryhan? Then recognize the gain. Okay? Kindly change this to 30,000 plus. No? This is 30,000. Okay? 30,000. And credit ta uh, debit tayo na accounts receivable, 30,000. So pag balance na ng AR ang tinatanong, yung sagot natin kanina na shortcut natin na 2,030,000, uh, 2, ito rin siya. 2 million na AR plus 30 na debit AR. That's 2 million 30. Pero ang shortcut natin class, ito na lang class, no? Rate, 40.6, multiply this by FCU na 50, that is still 2,030,000. Okay. Pagdating sa settlement date, on February 1, 2022, ganun pa rin ang formula mga kapatid. Change in spot rate, multiply this by FCU, at yung spot rate natin class ay 40.40 minus 40.60, nag-decrease by 0.2. Multiply this by 50,000, so you have 10,000 loss. Okay? And our entry class, ito po yun. Debit Forex loss, 10,000. Credit accounts receivable, ayan po, no? Credit mo yung AR, nabawasan receivable mo, nagkakalos ka ngayon. And, of course, to settle, ang balance na lang ng AR mo from 2 million, naging 2 million 30, nabawasan ng 10, 2,020,000 na lang, kaya ang debit cash mo is 2,020,000. And shortcut natin dyan mga kapatid, rate 40.40, multiply this by FCU na 50,000. Okay? So that is for uh, problem letter C. Okay, so uh, yung na-discuss natin class, okay, before we uh, continue, okay, ay uh, yung importing transaction and exporting transaction and we have direct, okay, direct uh, quotation and indirect quotation na concept. Okay, so yung first two uh, concepts ng uh, Forex uh, transaction part one, okay na tayo doon. Okay. You have to uh, master yung apat na ito. Okay? Dahil kapag ka nag-hedging tayo, okay? yung tinatawag nating uh, uh, for, uh, forward contract to hedge an item, kung ano yung concept ng speculation to buy and speculation to sell, okay? imamatch mo lang doon sa importing at exporting transaction. Okay, so let me uh, share my screen and let us continue class yung um, discussion natin on uh, speculation to buy and speculation to sell. Okay. 
Okay, so let me share my screen again. Kita po ba yung screen natin, mga kapatid? Okay. So let's proceed to speculation to buy. So sa speculation to buy class, okay, ang uh, entry natin muna, okay, ay debit receivable and credit payable. Okay? So debit uh, receivable from forex dealer, XD stands for forex dealer, and credit payable to forex dealer. But I would like to highlight class na ang uh, binibili mo ay foreign currency Kaya ikaw ang magde-debit ng FC, receivable. At ang pambayad mo sa kanya sa Forex dealer ay in Philippine Peso. Kung kanina class dito, balikan lang po natin, spot rate ang ginagamit natin, okay? dun sa importing and exporting transaction, this time, forward rate, FR. Okay, FR. Okay? Now, kung sakali man na nag-increase ang tinatawag nating forward rate, susundan mo ang galaw ng FC receivable. Okay? Hindi po yung peso payable. Kasi naka-peso na yan eh. So, the exchange rate will be applied, the change in the said rate will be applied sa FC receivable. Kaya ang note natin kanina, kapag nag increase ang rate sa speculation to buy, ay meron kang forex gain. Okay, bakit po ganon? Ito na po ang dahilan. Kasi receivable ang gumagalaw. So pag nag increase po, nagkaka-forex gain. Kapag nag -de decrease naman, nagkaka-forex loss. Bakit po? Nababawasan ang foreign currency receivable. Same with the settlement date. Okay, pwede po na nag-increase ulit. Okay, pero this time, hindi na forward rate ang gagamitin mo. Kung hindi spot rate. Yan yung note natin kanina, if you can still recall mga kapatid. No? Sa transaction date, forward tayo. Balance sheet date, forward pa rin tayo na rate. Pero sa settlement date, ang forward rate at spot rate ay iisa. Okay? Considered po as uh, spot rate din yung i-apply natin dyan. Okay? So, kapag nag-increase yung spot rate from forward rate na balance sheet date, then you have gain. Kapag nag-decrease, meron kang loss. Po. Tapos, yung peso payable na nakakredit, since isesettle mo na, mawawalan ka na ng liability. Dapat i-debit mo na siya. At kung ano yung napag-agrihan ninyo na presyo on the transaction date, yun din yung ibabayad mo na cash doon sa banko or sa forex dealer. Okay? At kung ano ang value naman ng FC receivable, on the settlement date, yun naman ang ide-debit mo na investment in FCU or foreign currency unit. Okay? Then, tsaka mo i-exchange, no? i-encash or ipapalit sa banko yung investment in foreign, foreign currency unit at spot rate and debit cash. So, dito class, do not be confused, no? Ang una muna ninyong iset up ay debit receivable credit payable. Okay? And to illustrate further yung concept, we have here problem letter D. Okay? On November 1, 2021, Bell Corporation entered into forward exchange contract to purchase 20,000 US dollar in 90 days for delivery on February 1, 2022. Okay? The fiscal year end for Bell Corporation is December 31. The exchange rate available on various states are as follows. Kapag ganito class, no, ang discarte dito ay bilangin mo muna kung ilang days ang tatakbo mula sa transaction date papunta sa settlement date. So from November 1 to February okay, 1, ilang days. So November 1 to December 1, that's 30 days. December 1 to uh, January 1, that is 60 days, and January 1 to February 1, that is 90 days. 
So, ibig sabihin, ito po yung importanting rate. Sa column ng November 1, okay, since 90 days yung tatakbo, 90-day forward rate ang gagamitin mo. Okay? Now, on the balance sheet date na December 31, 2021, bilangin mo rin kung ilan po ang days na tatakbo until February 1, 2022. So, December 31, 2021 is good as January 1, 2022. And January 1, 2022 up to February 1, 2022, 30 days lang. Kaya ito naman yung rate na pipiliin mo. Again class, ang labanan sa Forex ay ang pagpili ng tamang rate. Okay? Kasi dalawa lang ang formula na i-apply mo dito. Rate times FCU, that's the balance. Okay? Change in rate times FCU, that is the forex gain or loss. Okay? So sa February 1 naman, syempre from February 1 to February 1, kung kanina 30 days, ngayon 0 day. So ibig sabihin, yung spot rate mo at saka forward rate mo parehas siya on the settlement date, 40.40. Yan po yung mga tamang rate na kailangan mong i-consider ngayon. 40.20. 40.35, and 40.40. Question number 11, how much is the forex gain or loss on December 31, 2021? Again, kapag forex gain or loss, change in rate. Multiply this by FCU. Okay? So yung change in rate mo, we have here 40.35 minus 40.20. Okay? So that is equivalent to 0.15. Multiply this by FCU, which is 20,000 US dollar. So, meron kang 3,000. Okay, 3,000. Ang tanong, yung 3,000 na ito, letter A ba ang isasagot ko or letter B? Okay? Gain po ba or loss? Nag-increase yung rate. Ikaw ngayon ay bumibili ng dollars. So, ang entry mo initially is debit FC receivable. Okay? And credit peso payable. Yan na. So kung ganyan pala, ano po ba ang nagbabago sa change in the forex rate? Hindi po ba yung FC? At ang FC ay receivable. Okay? In this particular problem. So ibig sabihin, pag nag increase yung rate, nagkakagain ka. So isasagot mo dapat letter B, 3,000. Okay? Sa number 12, how much is the foreign currency receivable? So kung balance of receivable ang tinatanong, all you have to do is just to multiply the rate, okay, hindi po change, no? The rate on December 31, which is 40.35, okay, multiply this by FCU, which is 20,000 US dollar. Kaya ang sagot natin, 40.35 times 20,000, that is 807,000. Letter B. Letter C, I should say. Ang tamang sagot. Same problem, question number 13. How much is the peso payable? Class, kapag peso payable, hindi po ito nagbabago from transaction date to the balance sheet date up to the settlement date. Fix po siya. Kasi naka-peso na siya eh. So, ang rate ng peso payable is the rate on the transaction date, which is 40.20. Let's multiply this by 20,000 US dollar. Ang sagot mo ngayon is 804,000. Okay? With regard to forex gain or loss on February 1, 2022, ito po yun, no? From 40.35, naging 40.40. So there is increase further in the said rate. So 0 0.05 ang increase. Multiply this by 20,000. So, meron kang 1,000. Ang tanong, gain po ba na 1,000 or loss na 1,000? Since tayo po ay speculating in buying the said foreign currency, okay, ang change in FC receivable ang gagalaw. At yun po ay kapag nag-increase, nagkakagain ka. So, ang sagot dapat natin dito, letter C. Mamaya ipakita natin yung solution and the entries. Okay? Pero... Ina-apply muna natin yung uh, theory, no? yung concept. Yan. Since na-consider mo na meron pong gain na 3,000 at meron ka din ditong uh, 
uh, gain na 1,000. So, dito sa net forex gain or loss, from 40.20, naging 40.40. So, that is equivalent to 0.20 increase in rate times 20,000, 4,000 dapat ang isasagot mo. Ang tanong, gain ba or loss na 4,000? Letter B ba or letter D na loss? At ang sagot, letter B, 4,000. Bakit po ganun? Kasi ang nagbabago is FC receivable. At ang FC receivable, okay, kapag tumataas, matutuwa tayo kasi may gain. Okay, nagkakaroon ka ng credit forex gain. Pag bumabagsak, nagde-decrease, nagkakaroon ng forex loss. And ito po, no? Yung ating suggested answers. I-check na natin. Number 11, letter B. Number 12, letter C. Number 13, A, C, B. 13, 14, 15. Okay? A, C, B. Ayan po. So, ito po yung suggested answers natin dun sa problem letter D. So, again, we have here the entries. Okay? Formula. I-highlight ko lang, class, ha? Forward rate na po ang gagamitin. Hindi po spot rate. Why? Kasi speculation na po yung uh, transaction. Hindi na po siya importing. Hindi siya exposed liability. So transaction date rate times FCU is the value of your FC receivable. So ito po siya. Okay, punta tayo dito sa baba. 20,000 uh, US dollar times 40 peso point 0.2 is to 1 US dollar. Cancel dollars. Cancel dollars. So 804 thousand ang value ng receivable mo. Debit receivable, 804. Credit payable, 804. Since ikaw po ay bumibili ng foreign currency, magde-debit ka ng receivable of the said for foreign currency. Nakafix naman na po itong peso payable. Pagdating ng balance sheet date, change in forward rate, multiply this by FCU. What is the forward rate on the balance sheet date? na determine natin kanina correctly and that is equivalent to 40.30 okay and on the transaction date 40.20 ang rate natin so there is increase by 0.15 okay multiply this by 20,000 US dollar cancel dollars cancel dollars so 15 okay or rather 0.15 times 20,000 that is 3,000 gain yan po yung sagot natin kanina at ito naman po yung entry niya. Credit Forex Gain, Debit FC Receivable. 3,000. Okay? Now, on the settlement date, kung mapapansin nyo, change in rate na lang po. Kasi yung FR, forward rate or future rate, is the same as SR or spot rate on the settlement date. So, the settlement date rate, ito po yun, uh, deduct it by balance sheet date, so, 40.40 minus 40.35, there is increase, no? By 0 0.05. Multiply this by 20,000, so you have 1,000 gain. Entry ulit, mga kapatid. Nat matutuwa tayo na nag-increase yung uh, rate because you have to recognize gain amounting to 1,000. And debit ka ng FC receivable. So, pag tinanong tayo, magkano ang FC receivable? on the settlement date prior to collection or prior to payment. Okay, 804 plus 3,000, yan yung sagot natin kanina na 807, plus 1,000, so 808. Ngayon, kung yun lang ang tanong sa problem, wag mo nang entryhan. Pwede ka nang mag-shortcut using rate, which is 40.40, ito po yun. Okay? Multiply this by the FCU na 20,000 US dollars. So, 40.4 times 20,000, yan din po yung 808. Okay? So, class, uh, yung 808, ito po yun, debit investment in foreign currency unit, 808,000, and credit FC receivable. Bakit ko po, sir, credit yung FC receivable? Kasi wala ka ng receivable. Okay? Dahil pumunta ka sa bank o sabi mo sa bank o bank, Hindi ba nag-usap tayo noong November 1? Bibili ako sa iyo ng $20,000. At ang palitan ay 40.20. Okay? So ngayon, ito, yung cash na 804000 yan po yung ibabayad ko sa iyo, bank, at bigyan mo ako ng foreign currency na worth 
808,000. So, yan. So, kung mapapansin nyo mga kapatid, okay, hindi po nagbago. Okay? Wala pong uh, change, no? Doon sa peso payable. If you have noticed. Okay? Ito po yun. 804, 804. Kasi nakafix na eh. If forward mo na lang, i-apply mo na lang on the settlement date. Yang peso payable na yan. So, nagbayad ka ng 804, tumanggap ka ng worth 808 na dollars, na 20,000 US dollar, na ang palitan niya po sa peso ay 808. So, nagka-gain ka ng 3,000 plus 1,000, 4,000 ang sagot po natin. Okay, so ganyan po, no? That is for speculation to buy a foreign currency. Okay? Now, let's proceed to speculation to sell a foreign currency. Plus, kung ikaw ang nagbebenta ng foreign currency, ikaw ang may obligasyon na mag-deliver ng foreign currency. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, yung receivable mo, naka-fix na po na peso. So, on the transaction date, TD, ito ang initial entry natin. Debit receivable, credit payable. At wag po tayong malilito. Okay? Kung sa speculation to buy, ang concept ay ikaw ang tatanggap ng binibili mong foreign currency, kaya debit FC receivable, dito naman sa speculation to sell, credit ka naman ng FC payable dahil ikaw ang may obligasyon na mag-deliver ng prinamis mong ibebentang foreign currency. So, dito po, okay, kapag nag-i-increase ngayon ang rate, ha, hindi po tayo matutuwa. Kasi ang naka-expose doon sa increase in forward rate ay payable. Ang naka-fix ay peso receivable. So, pag nag-increase, Magkikredit ka pa further sa FC payable, magre-recognize ka ng forex loss. And pag nag-decrease, okay, bawasan mo yung payable, magre-recognize ka ng forex gain. Ganyan po sa balance sheet. Date. And you have to use the forward rate. Kailan? Transaction and balance sheet. Pero pag settlement date na po ang pinag-uusapan, spot rate na po ang gagamitin natin. Pag nag-increase pa, hindi tayo matutuwa kasi payable pong nagbabago, nagkakalos pa tayo. And pag nag-decrease naman yung uh, spot rate, okay, matutuwa tayo dahil mababawasan ang payable, magre-recognize ka ng gain. Okay? Now on uh, the uh, settlement, okay, yung peso receivable mo na nakafix, pupunta ka sa banko, no? O bank, okay? tanggapin ko na, kukunin ko na yung uh, peso receivable. Okay. O sige, ibigay ko na yung cash. Okay. Since, since nakuha ko na yung cash from you, i-credit ko na yung receivable. Wala na akong receivable sa'yo. Sabi naman ni Bank, e teka lang, hindi ba meron kang i-deliver sa akin na foreign currency? Ay oo nga. Ito, i-credit ko na yung investment in foreign currency ko kasi i-deliver ko na sa'yo at wala na rin akong FC payable. Ganun po. Okay. Ikaw, ang nag-promise na magbigay ng foreign currency at ang tatanggapin mo, nakafix na from the start. Okay? So, to illustrate, we have here problem letter E. On December 1, 2021, Pepper Corporation entered into forward exchange contract for speculative purposes. Okay? In anticipation to a gain to sell 10,000 US dollar. So, ibig sabihin mga kapatid, Bumili lang siya, okay? rather magbebenta siya, I should, I should say, ng 10,000 US dollars kasi ni-speculate niya na baka bumagsak yung uh, palitan ng peso to dollar. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kailangan mong i-account yung 90 day muna. On December 1, kung binilang natin, no? hanggang March 1, so you have January 1, February 1, March 1, that's 90 days. So, tignan mo dito sa rate, no? 30, 60, 90, 120. Piliin mo yung 40.25. Ito rin naman po siya, given din sa problem, no? Yan. Ngayon, pag binilang mo from December 31, papunta sa March 1, 
Okay? December 31 again is good as January 1. So January 1 to February 1, 30 days. February 1 to March 1, 60 days. So ito po ang piliin mo, 40.4. So may change in rate ka na dito. Okay? From 40.25 naging 40.4, nag-increase by 0.15. Matutuwa ka ba? Hindi. Bakit po? FC payable ang magbabago. So loss ang magiging result. From 40.4, naging 40.35. So yung change naman dito ay decrease. Matutuwa ka ba? Yes. Bakit ka matutuwa? Dahil mababawasan ang FC payable. Magkakagain ako. Ganun po yung concept niya, class. No? At kung uh, forex gain or loss ang tanong, 40.40, okay? okay? minus 40.25, that's 0.15. Multiply this by 10,000, 1,500 po ang sagot. Is it gain, 1,500, or loss, 1,500? Apply the concept, nag-increase, okay? FC payable ang nagbabago, hindi tayo matutuwa. Magkakalos tayo. So letter A ang tamang sagot. Okay? Number 17, how much is the forex gain or loss on March 1, 2022? From 40.40, nag-decrease by 0 0.05. 0 0.05 times 10,000, that's 500. Matutuwa ka ba na nabawasan ng FC payable mo? Yes. Kaya ang sagot natin, letter C, gain of 500. Po. Sa number 18, ang tanong ay peso. Eh hindi po ba, hindi nagbabago ang ating peso value. Kung receivable ngayon, okay, prior to collection, then 40.25 ang value niya from the start transaction to balance sheet to settlement. Hindi po nagbabago. So, 40.25 multiply this by 10,000, that is equivalent to 400, 2,500. So, ito po yung sagot natin dyan, letter A. Even without preparing for the entries class. Kasi dalawa lang ulit ang ating formula na kailangan yung baunin hanggang mag-board exam kayo. Okay? Number one, forex gain or loss is equivalent to change in rate times FCU. Number two, balance is equivalent to rate times FCU. Number 19, how much is the foreign currency payable on March 1, 2022 prior to settlement? So, kasi kapag after settlement, zero na yan kasi na-settle na. Okay? Peso payable after collection, zero na yan kasi na-collect mo na. Okay? So, dapat prior. So, kapag ganyan, nagbabago ba yung FC payable? Yes. So, on March 1, 2022, the correct rate now is 40.35. So, 40.35 times 10,000 is equivalent to 403,500. So, ito na po yung sagot natin. Okay? And with regard to net forex gain or loss, eh, teka lang, magkano ba yung loss natin noong December 31? 1,500. Magkano yung gain? 500. So, yung net natin dapat 1,000. Okay? So, yung loss mo, 1,500. Gain mo, 500. So, your answer should be letter D, 1,000. Okay? And ito po ang suggested answers natin for speculation to uh, sell. We have again letter A for number 16, letter C for number 17, letter A for number 18, letter C for number 19, and letter D for number 20. And the formula in computing for the uh, peso receivable and FC payable, ito na po yung nagbabago, FC payable. Kasi speculation to sell na po tayo, ay transaction date forward rate, which is 40.25 pesos is to 1 dollar, naka-direct quotation po tayo, multiply this by 10,000 dollars. So ito po yung sinasabi ko kanina, na kapag sa problem, naka-indirect quote, binigyan ka ng FCU 10,000 dollars. Tapos ang binibigay na rate class ay dollars is to peso, hindi mo mamumultiply yan without converting the indirect quote to direct quote. Kaya natin diniscuss kanina yung direct quotation. Okay? So dapat ang denominator mo is foreign currency unit para makancel mo yung dollars at dollars at matira po ay peso. Kagaya po dito, debit peso receivable, 402, 500 pesos and credit FC payable, 402, 500, uh, 402,500 pesos. Okay? Yung peso ay hindi nagbabago. Diba? From transaction to balance sheet to settlement. 
until makolek until mabayaran. Yan. So ang nagbabago po ay payable. So ngayon, change in forward rate times FCU okay, from transaction date rate na 40.25 naging 40.40, hindi ka matutuwa kasi nag-increase yung rate. At ang nagbabago ay payable. So yan po, no? Kaya yung increase na 0.15, multiply this by 10,000, you will recognize 1,500 forex loss, credit ka ng payable. So pag tinanong tayo magkano peso payable, or rather peso receivable, as is 402,500. Pero pag FC payable, from 402,500, ito yon plus 1,500. Kaya 404 ang sagot natin. Or simply multiply 40.40 by 10,000. Okay? Now, on the settlement date, March 1, the formula is change in rate times FCU. Yung rate na gagamitin na natin sa settlement date is the spot rate, 40.35, and the forward rate on the trans on the balance sheet date is 40.4, or nag-decrease. From 40.4, naging 40.35, decreased by 0 0.05. At itong decrease na ito, it will result to a gain. Yeah, 0 0.05 times 10,000, you have 500 Negative, but this is gain. Why? Kasi ang nag-decrease ay accounts payable, rather foreign currency payable. So debit ka ng FC payable, ito yon and recognize the gain na 500. Okay? So ganyan po. In case lang na entries ang tanungin. Pero kung wala namang entry tinatanong class, just apply the two important formulas na diniscuss natin ngayon. Okay? Ngayon, pupunta ka na sa banko. Sabi mo sa bank, o oh, bank, okay? Nasaan na? Okay? Nasaan na yung uh, uh, bayad mo sa akin? E, teka lang, sabi naman ng bank, nasaan mo na yung foreign currency yung ibibenta mo sa akin? Ay, oo nga, ito nga pala yung $10,000. So, credit ka na ng investment in foreign currency, wala ka ng payable na foreign currency. So, pag dinebit mo yung payable, 403500 sarado na yung payable mo. So, to check, 402500 Plus 1,500, that's 404, minus de, uh, 500 na dinebit mo, 403,500. Sarado na po. So ang kapalit naman, nung dollars na 10,000 na binigay mo kay bank, ang kapalit po ay 402,500 na cash. Ayan. And credit ka naman ng nakafix na peso receivable, 402,500. Kaya meron ka pong net loss na magkano? 1,500. Minus 500 gain, that is 1,000. Bakit po ganon? Ang natanggap mong cash, 402,500. Ang nawala sa yung dollars ay worth 403,500. So nag, nalugi ka ng 1,000 na loss. Okay? So yan po ang uh, effect kapag tayo nag invest sa foreign currency okay? or forex market. Diba? Ngayon, ang next na topic natin, okay, doon sa lecture series natin sa Forex ay yung hedging. Di ba? Kasi nakita nyo class, may Forex gain, may Forex loss. So para mabawasan yung loss, mag-hedge ka. Di ba? So dapat merong hedge instrument that will absorb okay, the possible Forex loss ng hedge item. And this will be discussed sa next uh, discussion natin or lecture natin sa Forex. Okay? So, uh, Ito po ang uh, suggested answers natin and ito naman yung ating uh, solution with regard to problem letter E. Okay, so uh, that in all persons and things, God may be glorified. Okay, and uh, lagi kong uh, uh, nire-recognize no? itong ating uh, uh, verse sa Bible, Mark 11:24. Therefore, I tell you, okay, whatever you ask for through prayers, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Okay? When I took the uh, board examination, bar examination, okay, dapat no, maniwala muna ako na magiging CPA ako, magiging lawyer ako. Okay? And of course, i-claim mo. Yan. So yun ang ginawa po natin. Okay? Nagdasal po tayo and of course with action. And ito po, uh, to give back sa kay Lord, okay, sa blessings na ito, and uh, I am now uh, conducting okay, itong humble initiative natin na free webinar or lecture okay, to uh, extend okay, 
uh, assistance, a eh, knowledge or help sa mga aspiring a BSA students and uh, CPA reviewees uh, in order for you to achieve your objectives or goal of becoming a CPA. So yun po no, ang ating uh, initiative kaya meron po tayong lecture series na ganito. Okay? So uh, aside from this, uh, nakita nyo class, we have a far quick notes 2023 edition. Lumabas siya noong September 23, 2022. Okay? At uh, Sa inyo na nag-attend ng ating uh, webinar, okay, lecture series dito sa ating uh, uh, Forex transaction na lecture at uh, nag-register. No? I have the uh, uh, list of uh, registrants, okay? 450 plus po yung nag-register. Thank you for registering. And uh, of course, to give back, no? uh, if you are interested sa ating textbook to learn more, okay? on uh, afar quick notes from partnership hanggang uh, cost accounting build operate transfer insurance okay ay uh, magbibigay po tayo ng discount okay sa mga nag-register ngayon at nag-attend ito po yung ating promo code okay i i would just like to uh, emphasize okay na uh, meron po tayong 50 uh, peso discount doon sa ating uh, uh, textbook okay just uh, uh, register doon sa link na i-email ko sa inyo mga kapatid. Ayan. E doon sa register the uh, email ninyo and uh, input nyo lang po itong promo code so that I can uh, give you a, a discount. Sa mga conditional, a conditional uh, examinee ng LECPA, uh, of course, isang subject na lang naman po ito, AFAR, okay, uh, I am extending a, a discount amounting to 100 pesos dito sa libro natin. Okay? Uh, of course, you have to uh, present na lang class yung, uh, yung uh, proof. Okay? And uh, uh, tsaga lang. Okay? Magiging CPA din po tayo. Yan. So again, thank you for attending our uh, lecture series. Okay? This is part one of our Forex uh, transaction and uh, translation lecture series. Okay? Uh, watch out at abangan na lang po yung uh, second uh, schedule ng webinar natin at i-discuss natin yung with hedging at yung pangatlo ay translation. Okay, so thank you and uh, good evening sa inyong lahat. Okay, welcome, welcome sa mga thank you. Okay, good night, good night. Sige. Abangan na lang po yung next na ating webinar on Forex.